Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Lhasa High School, where we've got another installment of Trojan basketball coming up for you in just a moment. Entering tonight at 20 and 8, 7 and 0 in district play are the Trojans looking to... Sorry, just got a question. Anderson, 20 and 8, 7 and 0 in district play. We are four and a half minutes away from getting started here. They are taking on a Lhasa team. That enters at just 3-15, and 2-5 and five in district play. They started 2-1, and one, and since then they have dropped four straight. They're coming off a five-point loss against Lockhart, but that one a little bit closer than the Lions might have anticipated. We are four minutes away from getting started here, as you can see up on that screen. Anderson looking to complete a four-game sweep of Lhasa going back to last season as we have entered the final stretch of regular season basketball for Anderson here, the second half of the district slate. Anderson 7-0, looking to make it 14-0 for two straight seasons, but they have to keep going through each team out uh, on their schedule tonight. They beat Lhasa at home 69-26, to and that was a game in which Anderson struggled mightily in the first quarter. It was tied seven apiece, I believe, at the end of one but we're able to come back and play a much better three quarters to pick up a big victory off the gigantic game from Jack Francis just uh, off of his career high. He had 28 points. Fred Dale was the other guy who filled it up in that game. He had 11. Otherwise, a lot of uh, small numbers for guys for Anderson. But they are coming off their best win of the season against... McCallum, they scored more points than they have all year, 87. Their previous high was 84. Everyone was clicking in that game. Uh, Anderson won at 87-44. Corey Price with 13 off the bench. A huge explosion for him. He was a pleasure to talk to after the game. Fred Dale, another guy who stepped into the starting lineup for Mitchell Whitlow in his absence with injury. He should be good to go. Had a little talk with Mitch um, for a couple minutes before the game, and he seems in good spirits, and he should be ready to get back into the lineup here very soon. But Fred Dale has been starting in his place, had a monster game uh, on uh, on last Friday. It's Tuesday now. He had 16 points, which was a team high just ahead of Nate Langley and Jack Francis, who had 15. Dale capped off a huge third quarter for Anderson in which they outscored McCallum 30 to 12. It felt like they didn't miss a shot all quarter, and Dale capped it off with a buzzer beating three from the corner. But now we have a loss of team, finally, a team that Anderson has seen before. So I already got the roster and I already got the scouting report on this loss of team. As we already said, they are two and five in district play if we want to pull up the standings. Anderson is at the top, 7 0. Travis is at the bottom at 0 7. Navarro is 1 6. Loss of the only team. At 2-5, and five, the, the interesting thing is, looking at this district slate, is that we have no ties right now through, uh, one time through. Travis is 0-7, Navarro's 1-6, Loss is 2-5, McCallum's 3-4, Lockhart's 4-3, Northeast is 5-2, Crockett is 6-1, and, and Anderson is 7-0. And, and honestly, looking at it right now, uh, if you ask me who the four best teams in district are, are the four teams that would make the playoffs if the season ended today, Anderson, Crockett, Northeast, and Lockhart. Lockhart just has too much explosivity with Jaw Gully, who's, uh, you know, he is uh, in danger of breaking out and going off on any night that he sets foot on the court. And Anderson uh, is perfectly aware of that, as Jaw did cook them on their home floor. Uh, but not enough for a victory. As Northeast, the only team other than Anderson right now with a actual winning record overall. They are 19 and 10. But Crockett has them outpaced in district at 6 and 1. They are one game ahead of them. As you can see, we are right here near the Trojan Bench on this next episode of Where Will They Put Jack During the Away Game? And the answer today was in a sad little corner by the bench. But I'm not mad. It's just not a great camera angle. So please bear with me here. I will do my best to call a good game and keep all the action um, in frame and everything. But. It's just going to be a little awkward as we get down to this end. It's not going to be super easy to keep our eyes on. But I think we're ready to go ahead and send it down for the National Anthem. Uh, we'll be right back right after that.
So I lied about the anthem. We just did starting lineups. But that's fine. Anderson tonight, uh, no Colin Page, and once again, no Mitch Whitlow. But otherwise, Anderson at full strength. Fred Dale uh, in the starting lineup for the Trojans, as he has been in the absence of Whitlow. For Lhasa, it's Plowman as a Koye. Davis Palmer, Huck Light Whipple, my guy from last game. And can't quite get a read on that. I believe it's going to be Nathan Voorhees, who was one of their primary offensive weapons in the game at Anderson. That was back in mid-December. This was the first game Anderson played as Langley. Going to go ahead and win this tip. There's Wagner. Anderson going to start off on the far end. But that'll be okay as, see, just a tough angle. As Blackerby is going to start out Anderson with a three. Bennett uh, coming off. A slow game from the floor. The uh, the loss of game in the uh, in the first part of the season was amongst his worst games all season. He only scored four, but it's a great start for him as he starts out with a wide open three. Is Francis going to get an open layup on the other end? Anderson starting out strong. It's a five to nothing lead for the Trojans as we have just entered the first quarter. Now back outside for Ezekoye into the high post. They try to dump it off, and losing it out of bounds is Davis Palmer, but it should stay here. Palmer had his pocket picked by the Anderson point guard. Raptors trying to get it in, and that's going to be too far, and that'll be into the backcourt. No? Oh, yeah, I guess you can... Hmm. I guess any inbound, uh, if it goes into the backcourt, it's fine. I just thought that was a rule for side outs. I didn't think you could do that on the baseline, but you can. As a Koye, that's a bad pass, and that'll go out of bounds. Trojan basketball, seven minutes to go. Anderson already up five. Seems like they've, over the past few games, really nipped their first quarter struggles in the bud there. It's into the corner for Blackerby. Now we'll pass it to Langley into the post. Langley trying to get Dale, and that's going to be Anderson's first turnover. Francis trying to get it back, but he can't. It's Plowman coming the other way. He had two points in the first game against Anderson this season. Now back outside. The three-pointer is no good. Wagner chasing the rebound down. Into the front court. Screen comes from Dale. Wagner dumps it off to Langley. Langley stuck under the basket. He'll have to get it out for Dale. Dale thought about the three and said kicks to Wagner. Now Blackerby, who's left open. Can't make it two for two. Rebound underneath goes to Huck Light Whiffle. And we come the other way. Raptors trail it by five. A minute and a half gone. Missed a heck of a game in JV. Raptors able to come back and tie it late. Force overtime, but Anderson able to get the win in overtime as this is going to be. Ooh, that did not touch baseline. That did not touch the baseline. For once, I, I actually do have a better view than the ref <laughs> as Wagner did try to save it, but. It was in that little little space of, of tan right before it hits that blue, the blue uh, baseline. The the first line you see there is the actual baseline, not not the one with the with the lettering on it. So into the corner for Voorhees. He's going to try and drive in. Plowman going to take it and get to the basket. Tough layup is no good. Rebound goes to Wagner the other way, and Anderson going to push. He lobs it up to Francis, and ooh, that went right between Blackerby and Francis, and neither of them knew who that ball was for, so it will be a turnover. It'll come back losses way. Anderson, after a hot start, 5 nothing, and went 2-for-2 two two there, 0-for-6. Oh Just got to protect the ball against a team like Lhasa, and now here comes Plowman the other way. Now Plowman trying to dish. Wagner nearly got the steal, and we will have a travel going against Voorhees the other way. I like being in this corner. I don't love the camera angle, but I like being here. It's almost like I'm part of the team for real. Hand off to Blackerby. Now Wagner going to lose it out of bounds. On the pass off, that'll be off of Wagner. Couldn't quite handle the pass. It's a fumble. 5.32 to go, as you can see. At least you get a, an actual view of the scoreboard. That's That's got to be nice. If you can see it from there. Yeah, you can. Now up across the other way. Now getting it underneath the basket. They'll have to pull it back out. Here's Voorhees. Doing a lot more acrobatics over here. And they get it under the basket. He's double team. They kick it out for Plowman. Plowman has a good look at it. That's an air ball way long. Rebound Francis. Jack's going to push it ahead to Dale. Dale the other way. And that's going to be another turnover for Anderson. Just got to relax. Now... This ball will go back the other way. A lot of turnovers. Got 
Going to get an illegal screen going against Loss, I believe, is the call. Can't always see super well from back here. Three minutes gone in the quarter. Blackaby has it on the wing. They'll get it back to Langley. Nate thought about firing. Instead, he'll dribble in and pull up. That's way long. Maybe just should have taken the three. So forget what I said about first quarter struggles. Anderson having their fair share here after a nice first minute. Although defensively, they're, they've been as good as ever. And as I say that, taking it in for Loss's first basket? No. <laughs> going the other way. Langley on the board. Wagner has it. Lobs it to Dale. Dale gets around him, and that's going to be blocked by Ezekoye. Saved by Voorhees. And now coming the other way. And Francis able to take it. But this one going to roll on the ground and go out of bounds off of Lassa. Trying to save it was light whipple, but he just couldn't do it. Anderson needs a timeout, and that's probably wise. This has been a rough quarter offensively, and since they have the ball back, might be the best decision here. Still plenty of timeouts. Anderson still no fouls here in the first quarter. There's 417 remaining. Anderson leads it 5 to nothing. Anderson missing Whitlow. And scored three in the last game against Lasso. Colin Page also out tonight. He did not score against Lasso in the first game. Francis, slower start uh, in this game against Lasso. 28 points his last time. Bennett Blackerby, a hotter start than he did against Lasso last time. But now everybody else on offense really needs to start heating up. Although the, the defense that Anderson has uh, been playing in the offense that Lassa has been playing. Five points. Certainly feels like enough to win this game right now. Of course, that's not true, but. It's been a defensive struggle here as Dale has it, loses it going to the basket, gets the ball back underneath. Going to go up strong, rebound back to Anderson. Dale has it. He was trying to go to the corner for Langley, but a lot of contact, and Lassa has another steal. As Okoye has been a pesky presence inside, some excellent defensive plays for him early on. Two points for Ezekoye in the last matchup. Now coming around the screen is Palmer. They get it to Plowman. Under four to go here now in the quarter. Langley coming up. Anderson doing an excellent job navigating these screens defensively, and that's going to be a carry going against Light Whipple. There is that much time left in the first quarter. Trojan basketball. Armour going to be the first off the bench tonight for the Trojans. Got started a little bit late as a result of the JV game going into OT, but still pretty good on time. Here's Blackerby coming around. Back outside for Wagner, who's left wide open. He can't connect. Rebound armor. Derek just finds his way out to get it to Blackerby, and Anderson going to reset. Wagner going to put it on the floor, finds Blackerby. Bennett doesn't want the shot. He usually loves that shot from the wing, and they're going to get another carry going against Anderson. This is a, a fundamental uh, officiating crew calling legal screens and carries and such. They get it into Voorhees. He's going to step back for three. Instead, kicks it back out to the corner. Now driving in, back for Plowman. Plowman going to fire away. His shot off the glass is no good. Rebound Wagner, and the Trojans come the other way. Wagner pushing. Armour catches it, but he's trapped under the basket. Back for Wagner. Wagner going to drive in. Gets as a Koye into the air, and that'll be two free throws for the point guard, Mike Wagner. Seven points in his last game, six points in the first game against Lhasa this year. Against the Lhasa Raptors. Lots of basketball on tonight. I'd like to thank you for joining us here on Vite. Trojans looking to push it to 8-0, and o, which would be their 22nd straight win in district play. Again, they lost their final game of the season back in uh, regular season. And, well, I guess they did lose in the playoffs as well, but the last regular season game in 2020 was a loss for the Trojans, but they have won every game since then, going back to the beginning of last season's district slate. Now driving in is Light Whipple. Light Whipple gets to the basket. Can't convert. Rebound Blackerby. Loss is still yet to score. Blackerby going to take it all the way to the paint. Avoids the contact. Got right around Travis Edwards. And gets it to go. Wagner two for two from the free throw line on the other end. So Anderson's starting to figure something out offensively. Back-to-back -back, uh, scores on back-to-back -back possessions for the first time since the opening two for Anderson. 
Now kicking it back out to Voorhees. Anderson doing an excellent job cutting off every single driving lane. And uh, the way they ice these screens makes it really, really difficult for, for any offense to do anything. That's why Anderson uh, victimizes so many opposing offenses. Here driving through, they finally get an open look in the corner. Shot's no good. Rebound Langley. Anderson pushing under two to go in the first. Armour has it. He's going to take it to the basket. That's blocked. Rebound to Francis, and Jack lays it up and in. So there we go. Anderson starting to get a little more juice on the offensive end. 139 to go here in the first quarter. Anderson leads it 11 to nothing. Lasso with two team fouls. Trojans with none. So, when, I mean, quite literally a perfect start on defense and just a shaky start on offense, but they're up into double figures. And, I mean, if you're scoring with a, with a, with a minute 39 left, you're probably going to get to around 15. If you're scoring 60 points in a game, you're doing all right. So... Uh, the scoring tends to come in bunches with this Trojan team, and uh, the, so do the droughts. But, Loss has got to get on the board somehow. We've had a few good looks at three, just haven't been able to knock them down. Haven't really had anything uh, towards the basket, but here comes them into the paint, and that's going to be out of bounds off of Campbell Duncan's knee. That was Davis Palmer trying to bring that in. Trojans have uh, some subs in. It's going to be Francis, Gill, Armour, Bazarian, and Campbell Duncan in the game right now. That's the five for the Trojans. Voorhees looking to get it in bounds. They do to Plowman. Now back to Voorhees in the corner. He's driving the paint. Shots up. No good. Rebound Armour. Derek pushes it ahead to Francis. Jack eyes up, dishes it off to Bazarian. Bazarian passes it through. He finds Gill wide open, knocks it down. Jackson Gill from downtown. Already matches his high from the game, the previous game against Lasso. He's got three points. Under a minute to go, it's 14-0 Anderson basketball. Now here comes Plowman driving into the paint. Now here's a short shot. That's going to be no good off the back of the iron. Edwards had the best look of the night for Lasso. Now we'll lob ahead to Duncan, and that's going to be intercepted by Plowman. Plowman going to try and pull it back on Francis, and they just leak it ahead to Palmer. Palmer going to drive into the paint, take it right at Campbell Duncan. That's going to be an air ball. I think Campbell got a piece of that. Now here's Light Whipple going to drive the paint. Gill trying to draw the charge. Light Whipple gets his own board, and they're going to call a blocking foul on Gill. Jackson was, was there and set up, but they're going to get him for the foul. And it's 14 to nothing. <laughs> that's all I've got to say about that call. So that'll send Light Whipple to the line. He had a team high of six along with Travis Edwards in the previous spot. He's got to make one here. High arcing free throw is good, and the lid is off the basket for the Raptors. Not the most desirable camera angles, but that's what the play-by-play -play is for. So he goes two for two, finally getting the Raptors on the board. Still zero field goals in the game for the Raptors with 25 seconds remaining. And Anderson most likely will try and hold for the final shot. Here's Francis. Under 20 to go. Lob across for Gill. 10 seconds remain. Now back outside for Campbell Duncan. Kills his dribble, looking for something. Finds Gill. Gill puts it on the ground. He's going to take it in. Looking for Bazarian. Hand off to Ben. Ben's going to have to step back. Put it up at the buzzer. No good. But Anderson still has a monster lead after one. Only two points allowed. Zero field goals in the first quarter. We are going to go ahead and take our first break on the broadcast. We'd like to thank you for tuning in tonight. More Anderson basketball right after this. Hey, buddy. You say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vipe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vipe, B-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals. 
academic events. For more information on how Vipe Live can broadcast your event, email us at Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Back in for the second quarter. We've got some backpacks. It's no problem. As they get it inside, now driving to the basket is Shaw. He's going to lose it, but it's over to Edwards. Plowman has it. And Francis diving to the floor, just scoots it over to Blackerby, and that's going to be another turnover. Langley running the floor, going to dump it back off to Dale. Dale going to go strong into the basket, put a shoulder into Palmer, gets his first deuce of the game. Anderson now 14-point lead again, their largest of the game. That's going to be another Anderson turnover. And, and now Francis coming the other way, taking it to the basket. That'll count plus the foul. And <laughs> sorry about that. We were trying to get some people out the way. They were trying to get into a door right next to me, but it was locked. Is that the kind of updates you're looking for? <laughs> Francis up to six. As he steps to the line for one more, make it seven. Now 19-2. Now here, outside, is Palmer. He's going to try and drive in. That's off the foot of an Anderson player, so it'll stay here. Now here, underneath the basket, looking to get it in is Quan. Quan with nowhere to go. He finally is able to get it into Palmer with nearly five seconds running out. Screen comes. That's Edwards. Now back for Vince Williams. Shot from outside, Shaw, that's no good. Rebound to Anderson, Wagner pushing. He's got Blackerby wide open in the corner, but Wagner just going to take it in himself. White five on the foul, that's Vince Williams. What they're going to say, Wagner was uh, trying to dish that off, so it'll be a an inbounds here. We'll try and get a better angle on it. Now into the corner, he finally does get Blackerby, but this time he's not open. Dumps it back to Wagner. Wagner was wide open, can't get it. Dale goes up and steals the board away. Gets a lay-in. Fred Dale has proved he has, it belongs in this rotation. As, as a starter, he's been very productive. Four points here tonight, a couple nice baskets. Now Anderson into the 20s. It's a 19-point lead. And Williams loses it. Blackerby defending. Now kick to the corner for Quan. Raps looking for something to do. Still zero actual baskets for the Raptors. Is Anderson really shutting this down here tonight? Back for Palmer. They get it over to Quan. Quan looking for something to do with it. Kicks it back out to the top of the key and Lassa. I imagine at some point we're going to get a desperation heave. As Shaw, I think Shaw stole that away. And Francis came up with it, and now Langley going to take it to the basket, and that's going to be a foul on the other end. To me, it looked like the loss of, you, uh, you have a, you probably had a better angle on it, or just as me, but if you can rewind it, I'll go ahead and look at that. It looked like as, as Shaw was supposed to be setting a screen, and I think Palmer had it coming around. It looked like Shaw put his hand in there to try and get a handoff, and it went askew. But there's Langley on the first free throw. That's Nate's first bas uh, first point of the game, I should say. As they're going to get Langley for a lane violation. So he goes one for two. Five forty to go in the second. Anderson leads at 22 to two. If you like twos. Good game for it. Now driving in. Williams, ooh, that was an audacious pass, but it was off the mark. I really like the idea of that, though. Now Langley off the scoop from Wagner. Nate going to take it all the way to the basket. Gets around the defender. Can't hit the shot. Dale was there to try and clear it away. Francis ends up with it. Now back for Bennett. That one's way off from three. Langley trying to save it. Does into the hands of Francis. Now here comes Wagner. Gets it to Dale. Dale. It's trapped. He's just going to put his shoulder down, and that's probably going to be a travel. Now they're going to get him for three seconds. 
he was camped down there for a little bit. So, and by a little bit, I mean more than three seconds. He was in that paint for a minute. That's one of my favorite rules in basketball because it's it's not what it actually is. Three seconds is always closer to like five or six seconds. As Blackerby, you got to get the hands out on defense there. That's just the first foul going. Or, uh, no, that'll be the second foul going against Anderson, other than Gill. Gill got whistled for a blocking foul, so two team fouls for the Troiani right now. Now here's Light Whipple coming into the paint. Well, the whole key is is paint. But here, into the corner, Langley doing a good job of staying in front of the much smaller Williams. Now that's a good head fake from Huck Light Whipple, but he loses it, and Anderson going to have it the other way. Francis going to try and push. They don't exactly have numbers, but Anderson does have the players. Here's Francis working his way around the perimeter, finds it to Blackerby in the corner. He's open. He can't convert. Rebound is batted around, and Loss is going to come away with it. Still 22-2, so Anderson's slowing down after their hot start in the quarter. Francis got a hand on it, but right back to Lassa. Now here at the other end of it is Palmer, and Palmer going to get whistled for a double dribble. This game has had it all. As Okoye into the game for Lhasa. He was uh, the source of some defensive struggle or offensive struggle, I suppose, uh, I, should, I suppose I should say, for Anderson as Okoye. An excellent presence down underneath. So here's Jack coming around the perimeter, and that's going to be a walk. He dragged his pivot foot. I think that's the right call. But now a minute uh, or a quarter and a half gone in the game, Lhasa has still yet to score a basket. It's 22 to two, they're only two points of free throws, so no field goals in the game for the Raps. Now coming the other way is Voorhees, who's just checked back in. And this is gonna be another turnover. Blackerby got a little too uh, antsy on that one and tried to pass it ahead, but it's gonna be a turnover right back. Good steal by Vince Williams. Williams swinging it around, now into the corner for Quan. Quan gonna take the screen, Gill defending. Back out for Light Whipple, Wagner in defense. Turning, spinning, trying to get around Mike. He gets to the baseline. That's a bad pass for Ezekoye, but Ezekoye able to uh, convert on it. Gill got the tip, but over to Quan. I feel like there hasn't been a pass that Anderson hasn't tipped tonight uh, on the interior. Now back for Voorhees. Voorhees going to take on Langley and kill his dribble right away. Here's Light Whipple, and that's going the other way on the post-up attempt on Ezekoye. Wagner drawing the foul with a smile on his face. Bazarian back in. Blackerby going to get a rest. So it is starters minus Dale and Blackerby plus Gill and Bazarian. Here's Francis coming around the pick. He's going to pull up for three. That's no good. Forcing it a little bit as Gill tried to get a hand on it. He did, but he knocked it out of bounds. So it hasn't been an excellent offensive performance from the Trojans, but they only have one team foul, and they still haven't yet lost a score a basket. Now into the corner is Williams. That was much too high for him. I was expect Anderson to pick up a lot of fouls in the second half. Under three to go now in the half. Trojans feeling fine with this lead. So here's Bazarian. Now back out for Wagner, takes the screen from Langley. He's going to step back, draws a double team, but Bazarian left open. He's going to fire away. He's 0 for 2 from 3. Francis on the board. Jack going to drive the paint. He'll have to pull it back outside, kicks it up for Wagner. Wagner had an open look, but instead he'll, uh, he'll just settle down. Now he'll drive in, hands it off to Bazarian. Ben will take it back up top. Ben's going to take it to the left, dumps it off to Langley. That's a good find. Langley, a beautiful feed to Gill underneath. Nice cut, nice finish for Jackson Gill. He's got five points in the game right now. All still in the first half, 24 to two. Anderson with a dominant performance so far on the defensive end. Here's Plowman uh, from the look on his face. They are not running this play right. As here's Light Whipple. And that's not gonna work. Anderson doing a great job still with icing on the screens. That's when you basically uh, dissuade the, the, the guy who's supposed to roll uh, from using the screen to roll at all. Or no, yeah. Uh, now we have a timeout. I, I'm going to explain that a little better. <laughs> uh, basically, you uh, on the ice when 
if a guy is trying to go right on a screen, you uh, who is defending the screener should come up to the left to kind of cut off the drive while the man who is defending the original ball handler kind of comes around uh, to kind of double him into the sideline. So it just kind of eliminates the pick entirely. And nobody in this district has really been able to solve that. I, I hear Anderson calling ice, ice, ice on, on so many of these screens that are set. And it, it has worked like a charm uh, at this level of play. But the Trojans will have the ball coming out of this timeout 24 to 2 here in the bonus. As I imagine, we're going to see a lot of players in the game tonight for the Trojans. It's 24 to 2. They have the ball, 141 to go. Up for Mike. Driving in, kicks it to Bazarian in the corner. Now Francis moving through. Screen comes. Wagner kind of snaked it before he even used it. But now Francis will step back out with it. Lobs it over to Gill. Like to see him get a few more shots up. They get Wagner. He's open from the elbow. He'll pull up and take it. Knocks it down. Mike Wagner with his first made field goal from the floor. It's four points for him. Made a couple of free throws earlier in the game. We are just over a minute to go. It is 26 to 2. As the end of the first quarter was 14-2. So here comes Huck Light Whipple driving in. Going to try and get around Langley. Does. Scoops and scores. Huck Light Whipple with their first made basket of the game just a minute to go here in the quarter. Francis with it now. They get it off to Gill, and that's going to be a jump ball. Trojans looking to inbound as the perfect game comes to a close for Anderson but a catch and shoot for Gill and he's feeling it tonight Jackson Gill from downtown his second made three he's up to eight points now they're trying to get it in Anderson still putting on a little bit of pressure with Francis here's Light Whipple and he gets it back to Palmer and he'll cross over, get into the paint, and that's going to be another illegal screen going against Lassa. So Anderson will have it for the final shot. It's 29 to 4 with 27.1 and no free throws on the offensive foul. So we shall take our time here, as Anderson likes to do. Get a good angle on the final possession. As they have Duncan in the corner, now back outside for Wagner. Now Wagner drives to his right, kicks back outside for Gill. He's left open. Another shot for three. No good. Bazarian crashes the board. He's going to get a shot up at the buzzer. No good. Campbell Duncan can't get the follow. So Anderson can't get a, another basket to fall at the end of the half. But they do push their lead even further. It is 29 to 29-4. It's a 15-point lead for the Anderson Trojans as we hit the break. Wouldn't even call it They're, uh, an excellent performance for them offensively, but... Really can't ask more for a defense, but we're going to go ahead and send it to break. We've got 10 minutes of halftime coming up right after this. You're listening to Anderson Basketball on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, not yet another Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone, touchdown Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vipe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. 
From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe View program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vibe Campus today. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey, high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vibe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vibe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vibe U today. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe View program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vibe Campus today. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey, high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. 
launched in 2017. Our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Halftime time. It's 29-4. to four. Anderson um, pretty much playing a perfect game uh, from the defensive point of view. Really, all the issues are coming on the offensive end, as it seems to have been all season. But don't really have much to say uh, as far as improvements for the second half uh, when it's, I mean, you've given up four points in an entire break. Lasso has made one basket, and it came 15 minutes into the game, like with a minute to go in the second half first two quarters uh, they've they've amalgamated two free throws and one basket 14 to 2 uh, first quarter and a 15 to 2 second for Anderson so uh, a little bit slow offensively they're uh, just a little sloppy with the turnovers that's that's really the only thing is uh don't get tunnel vision when you're driving to the basket look for guys to kick it to because I can guarantee you that they'll be open today they have been all game and um just don't make errors when Lhasa isn't forcing you to. They haven't really forced them to make a lot. Uh, the only guy who's really given them trouble as far as uh, like rim protection goes has been as a Koye, and he's made a few good plays, but he picked up quite a few fouls there in that half, I believe, at least two. Anderson still yet to come out onto the floor, but if you want to look uh, at the scoring column for Anderson today has been the Jackson-Gill game, my son, Jack and Jackson leading the way for Anderson. Eight points for Gill, seven for Francis. Blackerby has five. Wagner has four along with Fred Dale and Nate Langley has one. So not a lot of bench scoring in the game for Anderson other than Gill. Actually, no bench scoring in the game other than Gill. But Anderson playing pretty shallow with the rotation for the most part. Starters played a lot uh, in that first half where even against some some of the stronger competition in the district. Anderson hasn't uh, leaned on the starters that much as they did here as looking at the district slate for the other teams. The An interesting game, if you can find a way to watch it, will be Northeast at Crockett. Should be a fun one uh, as both those teams are pretty evenly matched, pretty close there in the standings. If Northeast is able to go on the road and get a win, they will tie Crockett, but Anderson doesn't look like they're in danger of faltering uh, so far. It's going to take a big half from Lhasa to even make this a uh, competitive looking game. Anderson feels like we are in the uh, looking at the uh, list of playoff appearance and list of uh, deep playoff runs for the Anderson Trojans. This is as close to a golden age over the past three seasons as you can get. This is some of the best basketball that has ever come through this high school since like the Chris Clack days. Remember last season, or a couple seasons ago, you had guys like uh, like Blake Spiller and Max Smith, or who I did a couple, a few playoff games for back in the early part of 2020, and then y'all asked me back. Thank you again, by the way, for last season and this season. And I've seen a heck of a lot of excellent basketball. Uh, some guys moving on from last year, like Gross Keel, Nick Harris, Benito Black. Uh, Jaden Austin, I'm sure there's guys that I'm forgetting as well, but now this season you've got a, a, a heck of a class of graduating seniors as we are now ready to get going for half number two. It's the third quarter. Lass is going to get started with the basketball. Francis nearly gets a takeaway right off rip, but now here on the other end. It'll be good. We'll get uh, a better look at Anderson basketball. Anderson wanted a call there, couldn't get it. Now back to White Whipple. Now swinging it into the corner for Voorhees. He's going to try and go at Francis Jack, staying with him, and they're going to get a whistle and the basket for Voorhees. So already a, a much better second half for Lhasa. They score a basket in 15 seconds. 
And my prediction already coming true is Anderson's going to get a lot more foul calls here, but I think that was a call. That was a good foul call uh, against Francis. He did come down with the arm. Is he high arcing free throws? No good as Okoye tries to get it back. Does for a moment, but Dale is there to clear away the miss. Now coming up the other direction is Wagner. Wagner going to take it to the basket. Tried to zip it out for Francis. Jack just able to save it. He's out there on the wing. Now up top to Blackerby. Bennett back to Wagner. Wagner dumps it off to Dale. It was a little pocket pass. Just couldn't quite thread the needle. And now lost it the other way. Here's Light Whipple. As he's going to pull up from the free throw line. That's way off. We'll call that a pass to Ezekoye. Francis intercepts. Now Jack crosses over, gets into the paint, dumps it off to Wagner, lays it up, lays it in. Second field goal of the game for Mike Wagner. He has six points. 31-6 now. Now back on. Posting up is Light Whipple, and they're going to get Wagner for a foul there. And Huck has scored the, the bulk of the points here for Lassa as he'll head to the line for two more. He's two for two on free throws. He has four points. That's no good. So a minute 15 gone. Anderson already with two team fouls. See how much... These guys play in the second half. As that one rattles around for a little while and finally drops through, Huck Light Whipple, five points. Of his team seven, it's a handoff to Francis. Well cut off, that's a nice job. Defensively on the perimeter for Lassa, but they're going to lose Blackerby into the corner, and he's going to can it. Bennett Blackerby started the game with a made three, and he starts with one here. He's now up to eight points in the ballgame. Oh. Now a three-pointer. The other direction for Lassa is Donahoe had to run across and fix the net. So I'll call this an explosion for Lassa. They have, as Blackerby going to fire away, he can't off the back iron. Rebound Langley loses it, gets it back, and it goes straight back up with it, lays it in. So, yeah, as I was saying, just an offensive explosion for Lassa here. As here's Huck Light Whipple driving in. They've already scored six points in the quarter. In just a couple minutes here, coming up, firing again, and that's another three-pointer for Huck Light Whipple. He's easily team high in this game today. 13 points now for Lassa. Wagner uses the screen. Nice pass to Blackerby. Up and under move is good. Beautiful finish by Bennett Blackerby, and an even more beautiful feed. For Mike Wagner, Black would be the first Anderson Trojan into double figures. He's got 10. It's 38 to 13. Now Ezekoye, off balance, just rifles that one off the wall. And it is brick, so. Last time Anderson played a game that was a loss of home game, we were playing it in the Delco Center last year. I'm not going to lie, I... Like that uh, <laughs> for a broadcasting space more than my little corner here. But Dale can't quite catch the pass. Too much heat on it. As Light Whipple gets into the air, and Plowman going to lose it. Out of bounds. Blackerby couldn't recover. He'll stay here. Five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Anderson with a healthy lead, 38-13. to Now back for Plowman. They're looking for Voorhees. Now, uh, something like a handoff to Light Whipple. He won't use the screen. Dale up on him. There's Voorhees. They switch. Drives to his left. Goes baseline, and Blackerby is there to just take that one right away. A lob ahead for Jack Francis. He's going to have a lay-in on the other end. Nine points for Jack. 40 points for the Anderson Trojans. 27 points is the lead. Well, yeah, keep it at 27. Rebound to Langley. Going up strong for it. Now here comes Blackerby. Watch the pull-up. He'll drive in, and somewhere there was a travel. Or uh, not a travel, a foul. 
We're going to get Plowman. I must have hand-checked him a little too much. But we have a baseline out for Anderson. Hi, Mike. There's that play again. <laughs> it's unstoppable. Can't do much about that, huh? Now Lassa going in the other way. They kick it to the corner. Quan had a shot at it, but now it'll be Light Whipple going to go in at Langley. He'll post up, turn, try and spin. Instead, he'll get Ezekoye, who's going to take the shot. That's well off, rebound underneath, and a foul called against Dale. It's a good foul to prevent the layup, but Davis Palmer will head to the line for a couple more. Two straight buckets for Francis gives him 11. That's back to the team high. Blackerby has 10. That's the first foul against Dale. Third team foul against Anderson, though. First free throw is good, so Lassa really, uh, you know, they're, they have outscored themselves by 10 in just four minutes as Anderson mass substitutions here. As we're going to get our first look at Corey Price since his big game last week. He had 13 all off the bench. So a much, much better quarter offensively for Lassa. As that's going to rim out, rebound Gill, good find. Now let's see him push the pace. Now Price. They get it into Campbell Duncan, post it up. Now Price again, he's going to drive the paint. Dishes it off to Armour. Armour has a man behind him. He's trapped underneath, but he'll get it back outside for Price. Price to Bazarian. Bazarian going to lose it. And you're going to get it on Ben? Yeah, it's going to be on Ben. So, 42-14, left in the third quarter. Looking for Voorhees, Campbell chasing him around the screen. Alasa, shots Shaw into the game, now in the corner for Quan. Some of the, the spacing has been very weird for Lassa tonight as Duncan goes down. As they're going to get a shot at the rim and one as Campbell Duncan has been lying there underneath the basket. As they're going to get Donahoe into the game for Campbell Duncan who is coming up gingerly. That's looks like when he's going to be able to walk off, but not right now. Uh, as it's good to see him uh, hobble over to the bench <coughs> under his own power, but still hate to see... Uh, an injury like that, hopefully he can be okay as he is a, a key piece off the bench for this Anderson team. Issue with his left leg here. Voorhees free throw is a high arcan one, but it knocks it down. 17-42. Zip into the corner for Gill. He's going to keep going. He can't, rattling around, he can't get it to go. Rebound underneath is going to go out of bounds off of Bazzari, and they're going to say Ben was on the line when he touched it. So going the other way, it's 42-17. Anderson, um, a little bit more lackluster here in the third quarter. Now here's Williams bringing the ball up for the wraps. He'll step back and try and find somebody. He finds Shaw. Rohan Shaw back outside. Williams comes up shooting, banks it in, and one? Okay, sure. Didn't see the... the foul. He came up completely by himself. But now also coming out like a house of fire. They've scored 16 points in the quarter. Because that's going to be a lane violation against Anderson. It's their second of the game. This is kind of the opposite of what we've seen for Anderson in third quarter is his Lassa dominating right now. Free throw rims out. Gill on the board. Still running with the bench unit. Gill comes around the pick. They left the price open. He's going to take it in. Goes to Donahoe. Donahoe left it short. Voorhees now out pushing. Anderson lead down to 22. Now Voorhees stuck in the corner. They get it back outside. He'll come up shooting. That's no good. Rebound to Armour. Derek going to nearly lose it. Gets his, it ahead to Gill. To, uh, just over two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. And they're going to get Gill on a carry. 
That's the third carry of the game, and I don't think I've seen a carry called all year. It's a carry. It's kind of how kids dribble now, I guess. As here's Voorhees, Gill going straight up. He'll have to kick it back outside, swing it into the corner for Quan. Quan hands it back to Williams. Under two, uh, under two to go here in the third. Back to Voorhees. He'll step back. Was left open. Can't connect. Rebound going to hit the ground. Go to Bazarian. Now Ben coming up. Gill zips it across to Price. Price going to drive in. Pulls it back out. Gill left open again. He's going to keep trying. He knocks this one down. And Jackson Gill is into double figures. He's got 11. Coming off a game in which he scored one point. An explosion for him here. With 11, he has a team high along with Jack Francis. Jack and Jackson. I can support that as here's Quan. It dishes it off. That shot's going to rattle around and fall for Travis Edwards. It's his first make of the game. He had six in the previous contest with the Trojans. 45 to 22. Anderson has the lead. Armour has it. Good screen from Donahoe. He looks inside to Donahoe, able to get it, trying to go up with it, and that's going to be a jump ball going this way. As Lassa did have the ball to start the half. Under 50. Uh, seconds to go here in the third quarter. Anderson with the lead and the ball. It's 45-22 to 22. as he gets it into Derek Armour. A little low on the pass, but Bazarian has it. He's going to come up shooting. That's going to be no good. Rebound to Shaw. Voorhees the other way. Now he punches it off to Williams. Crosses over. Uses the screen. Now driving in is Voorhees. Trying to find somebody. He can't find anyone, and that's got to be a backcourt violation, and it is. Or maybe it's not. A lot of people didn't like it. But if any part of your body uh, touches that line, then it's going to be a backcourt violation. Although they are really, really mad about that call. A cheer from the sand says, you can overturn that. You can't. It's high school. So here's Price. He's stuck. And that's going to be a foul called against Quan. That's just the third team foul for Lassa. Anderson already out of fouls to give with 15.6 remaining in the third quarter. So they'll just go backcourt for Price. Hands off to Bazarian. Now finds Price fading to the corner. Corey, nice feed to Donahoe, but Donahoe can't make him finish. Anderson is doing a good job of getting it to him. And, oh, Price nearly comes away with a steal. That was a beautiful try from Price, but instead it'll stay here. It looks like he might have jammed up Voorhees' hand in the attempt. 3.2 to go. They'll just have to get off a heave. As here's Williams driving in. He'll pull up. High Archer, well off, but a good attempt and good uh, way to get it off for Vince Williams. Had a four-point play there in that third quarter, but a little lackluster for Anderson, just kind of a clunky third. And that is sort of to be expected when you blow out somebody so badly in the first half. But Lassa coming back and playing excellent in that quarter. They actually win the quarter. Anderson gives up 18 points, and they only score 16. As Lassa has brought it back just a little bit, but it's still 45 to 22. A lot of bench action in that. Um, it's got real quiet in here. A lot of bench action there for the Trojans in that one. Jackson Gill playing out of his mind right now on the offensive end. 11 points for him. I believe that's a season high at, um, could be wrong on that. Didn't, of course, see all the tournament play, but definitely a, se uh, a season high in district play for Jackson Gill. 11 points into double figures. Blackerby and Francis right behind him with 11 and 10 as well. Wagner, Langley, and Dale, 6, uh, 3, and 4, respectively, as we will get the starting lineup for the Anderson Trojans coming in to the fourth quarter. It will be loss of ball. Anderson out of fouls to give, but you see Campbell Duncan there jumping up and down on the bench. That's a, that's a great sight to see. This here's Williams. They get it back outside for Shaw. Williams again. Dale defending. He'll go to the right. He won't use the screen. They kick it to Quan in the corner. Quan going to drive in. The floater is well off. Rebound to Francis. Jack going to push the pace. Lobs it over everybody to Dale, but Fred can't. Make the catch, so it'll go the other way. 
So turnover for Anderson to start the quarter. 7.38 to go. Just looking to close this one out and get on to the next game. No home games this week for the Trojans. We got a pair of away games, but that's fine with us as we can front load the away games and stack up the home games towards the end. It's here's Shaw firing. No. Rebound Wagner. Francis, he's going to catch. It's not a given this game. Because here's Blackaby. No contest. Can't connect. Rebound. Dale takes it away over everybody. Here's Francis. Now driving into the paint. He'll get to the corner. It's Langley. Langley going to fire for three. That's no good. Just short. And loss of the other direction. Under seven minutes to play in the game. A 23-point ball game for Anderson. As here's Shaw driving in. Goes right over Langley and drops it. Now a lob ahead for Dale. Catches this one. Gets Shaw. And Shaw is going to be whistled for the foul. So Dale will step to the line. Anderson, the lead is down to 24. Uh, to 21, excuse me. And for Anderson in district play, their lowest scoring game was 54 against Crockett. They might not get there tonight. But if Dale continues to knock down his foul shots, they'll be okay. That one rattles in. Six points for Dale, 47 for Anderson, and it's back to a 23-point lead. Fred Dale, very productive um, since he has stepped into the starting lineup for Whitlow. Definitely belongs. Definitely belongs in the rotation. Is here Shaw going to try for another basket? Can't connect. Rebound hits the floor and goes to Wagner. M Mike, ooh. Got to uh, avoid breaking any of my stuff. I don't own any of this, so that wouldn't be good. I got attacked. Is Anderson going to go with the bench once again? It's the same unit. Actually, no, Kalen Hole into the game along with Andrew Alexander. So Price, Gill, Bazarian, Alexander, and Hull. We'll see how long this group goes. 6.20 left. Anderson with a 23-point lead. As that's a nice finish on the floater from Vince Williams. Anderson can tend to let these bench guys get a lot of run here with the game for the most part in hand. As he zips it across to Alexander, tries to get a post touch for Hull, and that's going to be taken right away. This game pretty ugly for Anderson here in the second half. They skip it back to Shaw. He'll drive in, kick to the corner for Quan. Quan, he's had a couple good looks at it, just hasn't wanted to shoot. And was that a five second? Looked like he, the, the, the signal that he gave looked like three seconds, but no one was in the lane as far as I saw. But, you know, I could just be wrong. And they'd get it to Gill across to Bazarian. Ben running off the three-point line, tried to go up with it, and they're going to get him for a travel. So Anderson giving their starters a lot of rest here in the second half after playing them a lot in the first half. Is Bazarian going to come away with the ball there? Now he's coming the other direction, looking for somewhere to go with it. Finds Price. Price just throws it right into the hands of Quan. Not sure who he was looking for there. Now here's Voorhees looking to cut into the lead. Kicks to the corner for Quan. Now back outside. That's nearly picked off by Price. Just lost it. Williams is going to have it. He lost Price. He's going to come up firing and knocks it down. Vince Williams. An unorthodox approach, but he's knocked down some shots tonight. Here's Price. Knocked out of bounds by Voorhees. It'll stay here. It's just an 18-point game. So Anderson really got to keep their feet on the gas. Actually, 17 points. Excuse me. Here's Alexander, going to get the blow by, take it in, dishes it off the hole. Hole shot's blocked, but a foul. Two. 
No, okay, I was right to begin with. It was 29. It is an 18-point game. First free throw rattles out for Hull. Second one drops for Kalen. So he's got a point. Pushes the lead back to 19. Now here's Williams. He's been hot, so I imagine he'll want to keep putting these up. He puts this one up. Can't get it to go. Rebound goes to Gill. Jackson finds Bazarian. Ben stepping back. Now back over to Gill. Here's Price. Moving traffic through. Back across to Gill. Into the corner for Alexander. He's wide open. Shots short. Gill bats it to Hull. Hull finishes the layup. That play was all Gill. But Hull, nice job on the finish. He's up to three. And the good game continues for Jackson Gill. We've talked about him uh, some this season as, as far as flashes go. And this has been an incredibly uh, getting a lot of flashes of, of what could be a very excellent player for Jackson Gill as that's going to be another missed three for Lhasa. Ball batted as Okoye saves it. That goes off the, what, side of the rim? Is that not out of bounds? Did, did he not throw that off the backboard? I, I don't know how that ricochet happened. But here's Williams. Gets free. Holt comes up on him. Now back across to Shaw. Shaw going to drive in on Price. Bumps him off. Throws it up. No good. Rebound Gill. Getting huge. Some excellent point forward vibes from Jackson Gill as Price is going to step back into the corner. Can't hit. Rebound goes to Voorhees. Alexander nearly had it. It's 29 to 50. Anderson has it back to a 21 point lead. Here's Voorhees driving in. Ooh, beautiful spin. And a beautiful finish for Nathan Voorhees. As Coach Pitt wants a timeout under 3.30 to go, but it's back to a 19-point lead. Some nice flashes from Jackson Gill in this one. Still incredibly young, still just a sophomore, and looking ahead, it's going to be a, probably a lot of Bennett Blackerby next year for Anderson. And then you got guys that are still just sophomores, Gill and Duncan, who both got a lot of run at the varsity level last season. So that's some valu valuable experience on the Anderson uh, sideline moving forward. They've still got Fred Dale for another year. They've still got, uh, as we said, Bennett Blackby, and we've still got Mitchell Whitlow for a year. So Anderson should be feeling pretty solid about some of their prospects with the way that uh, the JV team has played. They've gotten a lot of good wins, although... Anderson definitely going to be moving into a much tougher district next season. But we are out of the timeout. 51-30. It will be Trojan ball. And they're going to run the starters out there just to close this thing out a little bit more. Campbell Duncan still favoring that leg, but he seems to uh, not nearly as much as he was before. He's not hopping up and down on it. So hopefully that's just a, a twinge at, at worst. But here comes Mike. Screen comes for Langley. Wagner going to pull up. Lost it going up. But the rebound goes right back to Francis. That's lucky for Anderson. And now they get what they deserve, and it's a turnover. It's Francis coming for Williams. Screen comes as a Koye. Now into the corner for Plowman. Plowman comes up shooting. That's good. That's his first bucket. 16-point game. Langley now hands it off to Wagner. Wagner driving in, takes it to the hole, gets it to go, plus the foul. Took it right at Ezekoye. Beautiful finish for Wagner. He'll head to the line for one more to erase the three-pointer. I think that might be it for Ezekoye. Perhaps not. It looks like he was just signaling towards the bench that he had five, but no dice. He'll stay in the game. 53 to 34. 2.28 to go. As Wagner pokes it away from behind, Light Whipple gets it back, but he'll head to the line for a couple more foul shots. Looks like Anderson may be able to avoid their season lows and district points. Like 46 is their actual season low. 
Actually, 37 against Bel Air in a tournament. So that's the first free throw down. But as far as district goes, yeah, 54 is their low. And if they hit a basket of any kind, they'll uh, erase that. And there's two free throws down for Light Whipple. Fifty-three, thirty-six. Here's Wagner into the corner for Blackerby. Bennett holds on to it. Back to him. Passes it up again. Loses it. That's a turnover. It's been a sloppy game from from Anderson here. So they've really let Lassa kind of come back and hang around in this second half. And it's I guess it's the difference of making absolutely nothing versus making open shots. As here's Plowman driving to the basket, can't connect. As Blackerby, ooh, no foul called. There's always a lot of contact on that board. Is Coach Pitt going to call a timeout? 17-point game. Anderson with under two to go. Several guys in um, double figures tonight for the Trojans. Gill, Francis, and Blackerby, 11, 11, and 10. Wagner looks like he's going to come up just short as he heads to the bench for the final minute and a half. He had nine. Slow game for Langley. He only scored three here. Only scored five in the first game against Lhasa. Maybe it's a good thing that Anderson doesn't, want, doesn't see this opponent again. I'm not sure if they want to. Hole in the inbound, looking for somewhere to go with it. He finds Armour. Now Armour's stuck with it back at the top of the key, and they're going to get him for a carry. That's a, a, another carry called. I think I literally haven't seen a carry all season unless it's been particularly egregious, but we've had a lot of them here tonight. 90 seconds to go. Light Whipple driving in. Got Alexander. That'll be two free throws. And Coach Pittsford <laughs> asking the ref what he did, and he just kind of gave him a shrug, and he pointed. It was a very what-do-you-want-me-to-do shrug. As the first free throw rattles out. One for two. 16-point game. Anderson uh, still with the game in hand. Sears Armory gets it to Alexander. Alexander, ooh, he had a look, but he's just going to hold it. I think that's a smart play. Now here is Price. Drives in, kicks to Donahoe. Now Liam in the hole. That was just a risky pass. Now just a minute left to play. A minute four to be accurate, more accurate. Rather more precise. A little bit of both. Remember that lesson in math, precision versus accuracy? That's the end of that thought. Um, <laughs> just was reminded of it. That was dumb. All right, here comes Price with under a minute to go now into the game. Anderson seriously in danger of uh, season low in district points. Off of a season high. I guess that makes some sense. Uh, the hottest they've ever been to the coldest they've ever been. But... Lhasa doing a great job of just making it hard on Anderson for the end of this game, and that's going to be a foul. That was their foul to give, so Price is going to head to the line for two, and hopefully uh, they're going to be able to overcome that Crockett score of 54, although it doesn't really matter. It's just i got to keep myself busy with something. What? My horn's up 20 at halftime? I'll take that. They must play good when I'm not there. As Price misses on the front end of the one and one, so no dice. Anytime I watch Texas, I feel like they play bad. Because that's got to be a travel, yeah, all right. He dragged his pivot foot. As that's rifled up to armor. So here's Hull and now Alexander with Anderson going to get a victory here tonight. They will score a season low in points, barring uh, some, some weird antics in the next 13 seconds. 
Donahoe puts it on the floor, back outside for Hull. Kalen, 13 points, or uh, not, th excuse me, three points in the game, including a nice finish underneath the basket. As that was a five second violation, but the ref, Price took a, a, a finger to the face, and instead they'll just let the game end. Anderson wins it 53 to 37 after a pretty wonky second half there, but no matter, they do push it to eight and O in district play, 21 and eight overall. Looking ahead at the schedule, we will be on the road once again uh, at Navarro on Friday, although we do have one thing to tell you about that. This is uh, Navarro does not field a JV team, so that game will be a half hour sooner, as will the Travis game uh, two Tuesdays from now. So 7.30 start for the game against Navarro on Friday. Jackson Gill, big game for him, 11 points. 11 points for Francis to lead the team, along with Bennett Blackaby right behind them with 10. Wagner had 9. Dale had 6. Hull and Langley had 3. That's it for your Anderson scoring. As we said, 7.30 on Friday, Trojans take on Navarro to make it 9-0 in district play and try to push it to 22-8. With that, I have been Jack Farrell. It's been a pleasure joining you on a Tuesday night as Anderson picks up yet another district win. We're going to go ahead and sign off here. I'd like to thank you for tuning into the broadcast. This has been Anderson Basketball on Vibe Live. Good night, everybody. <laughs>